me on Instagram to never ever miss any of my crazy updates. Hi guys and welcome to another vlog. I'm driving this. This is the Audi RS Q8. You can see the key of the car says RS right there. And this is actually to lock the car. This is to open the boot of the vehicle. And this is to unlock the car. Audi logo there of course. You know what's the highlight of this car? The wheels. These are massive wheels. 23 inch wheels. You know what's the size of the rotor inside? 17.3 inch. These are 10 piston calipers. At the rear we've got 14.6 inch rotors. That's like massive, but we'll come to that in a bit. I'm just like going crazy over the wheels. That's why I came here. But first, we should open the hood of the vehicle, which means, yeah, there it is. Obviously, gas struts here. There's insulation right there. It says RS V8 Audi logo. Beautiful engine cover. Looks really nice. They've given it the red treatment as well. That is where the washer fluid goes. And you really need a lot of washer fluid because obviously this car also gets headlight washers. The engine bay looks kind of busy because it's a massive engine. In fact, it's so big, it's so big. There is no place for the battery here. That's why the battery is actually in the boot. Let's shut this straight away. Now the RS Q8 looks absolutely stunning because it's got a lot of RS specific bits. And this one has the black package, which makes the Audi logo black completely. You can see the massive Audi grille says RS Q8 here, which again being finished in black cannot be seen properly. I think these are dummies for the ADAS uh, system to be put, which is not there on our car today, of course. There's a front camera here and front parking sensors almost everywhere. This car has crazy attention to detail. In fact, when you turn the car on at night, it does this beautiful light dance. And when you turn off the car as well, it does a beautiful light dance. So that's like complete theater. Now you can see these are the dynamic swipe indicators which swipe from the inside to the outside. You can see the main beam, <laughs> very bright, all LED lights, of course. Let's see the DRL. There you can see the DRL looks beautiful. Headlight washers, uh, they are a little slow in this car. They don't spray as much of amount of a spray as I would expect. And here, is this functional? No, this is not functional, but uh, the vents are big enough to draw in air. There is a towing hook right there. Although the car will not really need it because it will be so freaking fast that you reach your destination even before you think that, okay, abhi khara ho sakti hai. Anyways, <laughs> you can see the ride height has actually been dropped at the moment and there, oh God, what an absolute beast. It looks so amazing in this blue color. Now standard wheels, I think 21 or 22s. On our test car, we have 23s, which I think are standard on the Indian model. 295, 35, 23 is the size of the tires. All the tires are the same size, of course. Red colored brake calipers. Uh, does it say RS? Yes, it does. Okay, the wheels are absolutely crazy. The design is amazing. It's so huge, the wheel size. Crazy. You can see there is no space between the body and the wheel because obviously I put the car in dynamic mode, so it's squatted down. You get these very sporty wheel arches as well, flared. And coming to the side of the car, you realize this is actually big. Almost 2 meters in terms of width, 1998 mm. Okay, and uh, the length is around 5 meters. The wheelbase is almost 3 meters, so it's a humongous car. And this is a coupe SUV, but Audi's way of doing coupe SUVs is very different. The roof line does not slope like that. It comes like this and then it slopes immediately. That means that headroom will not suffer on the inside, which is good. You know what? There's no request sensor on the door, which is kind of disappointing. At night, when you open the door, nah, it projects Audi Sport on the ground, but it does it on all the doors, not just the front door or the driver door, everywhere. That's kind of cool. Mirrors are huge. It gets this piano black finishing. There's a camera here, of course. Uh, the car gets 360-degree camera. Roof rails don't seem functional to me. And uh, you can see it gets a panoramic roof as well. An antenna, which is sort of a shark, shark fin treatment, but finished in body color as well. And let's just open this. And there you can see 
where it's going to drink a lot of fuel unlimited fuel only it wants 98 octane fuel of course with that engine it won 98 octane fuel now you can see this beautiful cut which starts coming from here and then goes all the way till the boot and then carries forward it's like really very nice but Faisal Khan's fingers of truth are really unhappy with this fake stuff happening here I mean why is this needed this fake stuff on a very beautiful car otherwise okay let's see the wheels from below there you can see massive size style you mongers and because it's on dynamic mode you can hear the exhaust sound as well now at the rear the theater does not stop at night when you turn on the lights or rather unlock the car it does a beautiful light dance and when you decide that okay ho gaya aaj ke liye kafi gaadi band karo again that beautiful light dance happens it's so amazing to look at just look at it like wow dynamic swipe indicators again swipe from the inside to the outside the lights on this car is absolutely amazing and then this is a continuous light treatment which joins one light to the other one now this is completely sloping there is a rear wiper of course beautiful treatment of the wiper there is a rear spoiler with a stop lamp as well meanwhile black colored audi logo it says rs q8 which again is blackened out and piano black finishing here on the lower half you get request sensors here there is a camera which by the way has a function which sprays the camera to clean it as well nice diffuser treatment oval exhaust which actually have two exhausts on the inside so it's got quad exhaust it's typical audi rs affair and below you can see now let's open the boot of the vehicle all i have to do is press a button here power tailgate for the win the boot carrying capacity is actually 605 liters which is actually quite big considering this is a coupe suv and there is light placement here on both the sides which is kind of bright there is net placement here so you can organize your stuff a 12 volt charging socket as well uh, i don't know what exactly this is but there are dummy buttons here and the parcel shelf is so easy to use look at this okay it just clicks okay and then i'm going to open it take me wrong there it goes it's so nice i love it meanwhile i don't know what exactly this is You can see there are buttons here. For what exactly? You can increase or decrease the ride height so that it becomes easier to stuff in luggage. So what you are going to do is we are going to drop it to the minimum at the moment. And here we go. Yeah, just a press of a button, and there the ride height decreases. You know why this is done? This is actually doing it for the rear suspension because air suspension for the win. This is largely done so that it becomes easier to stuff in luggage. You can reduce it by 90 mm. Anyways, this plastic hasn't been removed, so we are just going to take the liberty to remove it. Yeah, that's so satisfying as well so you know what you can increase the boot carrying capacity because this is a 40 20 40 split rear seat and i love the size of the boot it's humongous to say the least now the spare wheel is obviously i mean it cannot be full size so it happens to be a 195 65 21 that's an awkward tire size there is the jack i can't find rose at the moment and there is the battery of the vehicle which is placed in the rear obviously because there's no space as such let's press this button and you can see a lot of hard plastics here that shuts the boot now the rear fog lamps are actually turned on okay that's just a reflector rear fog is here so that is kind of only on the one like only on one side which is very normal with european cars so nothing new here now, i'm disappointed that there are no request sensors on either of the doors anyways let's open the doors now they do open wide enough and you get this beautiful alcantara finish and quite a bit of hard plastics low down it says bang and olsen here door pockets are huge in terms of size beautiful red stitching there's an ashtray right there and there are two buttons here okay one is obviously okay you can put down both the windows from here itself so i'm just going to yeah that's kind of cool so i've put the window down nice sun blinds which are very useful that's about it it does not go any further but these are frameless doors which is really nice i i'm really dig them of course let's just put them back up and there they roll up speed is fine and this is very important right now because it's super duper duper hot the sun blind now you can see that is the difference between minimum and maximum legroom there's a lever here all i have to do is like push the seat all the way behind and there you can see the legroom increases dramatically i can put the seat down by pressing this button here yeah it doesn't fold completely flat now you might be wondering how can i do it independently well let me push this back into place now you can see the recline angle is actually increased that is completely reclined so you're going to push it back yeah the recline angle is this much only changes i mean change to the recline angle it says rs here beautiful red stitching the seats are really nice i still fix child seat mounts of course and here i can recline the middle part as well that's also cool 
to access the boot if you so wish let's put this back into place there is an armrest here with twin cup holders and you know what i love the seat quality let's get inside first and foremost leg room and knee room is actually quite good here hard plastic here slightly scooped out magazine holder as well let's shut the door no effort needed because soft closed door there it pulls it inside and shuts it ambient light looks absolutely sensational at night i didn't know if i would ever say this for an audi but it's very nicely done in this car there's a handle to hold on to there's a hook this is i think for the coat hook ac vent placement on the b pillar in the center as well a lot of controls here for the air conditioning you get heating function for the seats at the rear and let me just turn on the air conditioning so it gets a four zone climate control air conditioning system yeah it's very effective as such there's a hump here which is kind of an issue for sitting three people at the rear but trust me the cabin is wide enough and the center passenger also gets a head it says rs here on the backrest i love the quality of the seats the recline angle everything is very nice and you can see the window area is also big enough in fact light placement is here on the top but this is not really a panoramic roof because it's not as big because of the sloping roof line they could not really extend it all the way to the rear now this is actually soft but because the front seats are so big it's a bit of a hindrance in seeing what's ahead and headroom is kind of accurate uh, i mean adequate for me but yeah it's a little bit tight but still good enough for a coupe suv meanwhile under thigh support is not the best here could have been better let's do one thing let's open the door okay because bring in a lot of airiness i think speaker placement lot of speaker placement here and there another hook front seat belts get the height adjust function and there's an airbag almost everywhere in this car you can see the dashboard looks fantastic looks very nice finished in black it's very sporty and this uh, panoramic roof is also bringing a lot of airy feeling in what is actually kind of a dull cabin because of the blackness or rather full black now getting in and out is not difficult at all because right now the ride height has been dropped completely otherwise also it's not an issue now i don't even have to take effort to shut this because soft closed door there it pulls it inside and shuts it that's fantastic okay let's get ahead now as soon as i open the door there you can see the seat is moving behind because it has this feature wherein the seat will move behind so that it's easier for you to get inside the car door pockets at the front are decent size as well bang and also written here rs q8 is written right here which actually illuminates at night and q7 mats on this car mm i paid so much more money for the car compared to a q7 the owners might think anyways you can see the glove box is decent size doesn't get the cooling function but i think this is for the hard drive uh, like yeah and there's a light placement inside as well okay this uh, these are the insurance documents of the car we'll talk about it in a bit beautiful red stitching looks really nice in fact single piece seat no adjustable headrest not a problem because these are sporty seats and it says rs on the seats and beautiful red stitching as well okay these are actually the controls for the adjustment of the seat but i was talking about insurance because the insurance cost of this car for the first year happens to be hold your breath 8 and a half lakh rupees to insure the audi rs to it for the very first year of ownership that's a lot of money i know but the cost of the car is also <laughs> through the roof okay let's open the door oh my god it's locked the car what have you done car how could you lock yourself like this no reason for it to do it yeah it's locked itself i have the key in my hand it's going to be awkward if it's locked itself it shouldn't have done it yeah come on car do not lock yourself so from here we are going to open it aise kaise badtameez kar lete ho you hear that noise that nice noise which comes from the car now because it has a massive engine it has this uh, uh, kya bolte hain heating issue like i can feel the heat right now wipers are absolutely beautiful they like really very nice wipers let's get inside you know what there's light which actually comes out from here at night so that you can see where the door handle is now this is placed on the higher side let's open the power i mean let's put the power windows down it's not going to go roll down completely but if i press it once again then it rolls down completely i don't know the logic for that but you can see <laughs> frameless doors look absolutely fantastic on this car like really very nice in fact okay uh, another thing is that here you get a lot of information here is the information for the tires of the vehicle standard 275 40 22s well this one is running even bigger tires like i told you rs q8 is written here which obviously illuminates at night when you unlock the car and all that stuff now there is a proper dead pedal in sort of chrome finish pedals like really very nice i love it and here there is a secret storage space which actually is not as deep as i would have thought yeah it's decently decent to keep your secrets away from your wife without her knowing about it engine number and weight of the vehicle is being put right here now 
lot of controls here if you press this button you can do all the seat adjustments which cannot happen here because they have to happen in the screen which i'll show you once i sit inside okay let's try the soft close door again yeah there you see there it pulls it inside this is a feature which i know i have kind of taken it for granted but i love it for sure i love the beautiful alcantara finish these are the controls for the adjustment of the outside rear view mirrors it gets a heating function it gets auto dimming as well and these are the controls for the power windows and one touch up and down for every power window and these are for child lock for the rear seats of course beautiful red stitching beautiful alcantara finish you can see up to beautiful settings for the seats of course and this is to unlock the car this is to lock the car and you know what <laughs> this is massive the door pocket this is to open the boot of the vehicle from here oh my god there is a lot of heat now let's do one thing let's adjust the seat and there you see when i adjust the seat or uh, like with seat memory i'm doing it right now even the position of the steering wheel changes so that also gets saved that's quite nice and when obviously open the door of the vehicle every time the seat will actually move behind so that's just easier for you to get in and out that's cool okay i love this finishing it's so nice automatic headlights okay and uh, these are the controls for the front light this is for the rear fog of course and lot of piano black finishing which may or may not be welcome seats are very comfortable just look at the seats like really nice side bolstering and beautiful red stitching says rs here in fact you can see the roof of the vehicle now let's get inside okay finally and here i'm just going to like keep it there i think someone has turned on heated seats because so freaking hot on the inside So I'm just going to do one thing. I am going to show you the glove box, which I've already shown you from the other side. It says Quattro here, just in case your passengers do not trust you when you're giving beans to the car. That right? this car can handle it because of the Quattro all-wheel drive system. Let's do one thing. Let's open the sunroof. Here I press a button, and there it opens. It actually brings in a lot of light in what is a rather a full black cabin. Yeah, that's it. That's the maximum it's going to open. It's not going to open any further. So we're just going to shut it right away. There's a handle here. There's a handle here also on the driver side, and right here you obviously get a mirror along with a light. That's kind of nice. Same is the case here as well. You get a mirror along with a light, and when it connects, then only the light works, of course. Now this is a frameless auto dimming inside rear view mirror. Air conditioning is actually turned on, so we're just going to shut it for a moment. This is the light, and you know you can increase or decrease the intensity of the light. Here I've put it to the minimum, and then I can just slide it ahead to increase the intensity. So that's also quite cool. Yeah, this is how it's done. Okay, yeah, touch sensitive lights, beautiful. Again, multiple light placement here on the top. Says passenger airbag, whatever. Now it does not get uh, you know tweeters which come out from there, which is there on the regular Q8 model. Although this is a bag and also an audio system, which is the same. I mean, rather similar to the regular Q8. That particular feature is not available here. Kind of unfortunate. Anyways, lot of piano black, which is a fingerprint magnet. So we're just going to leave a mark here. Now there's a proper key placement right there, positioned for the same twin cup holders. Okay, there's an ashtray right here. Oh God, I just dropped it. Yeah, there's an ashtray. By the way, you know what? <laughs> the Audi logo is beautifully done on this ashtray. It's kind of nice. So we just put it back right here. Now let's shut this. Electric parking brake, auto hold function. This is the beautiful gear lever tells you which mode you are in in terms of driving. Now this is for the driver assist system. It doesn't really have much as such. It doesn't have ADAS function, so we just get out of this. This is for the parking camera. Now it has a beautiful camera, 360 degree camera, of course. And there, there are multiple views. You can see the car from the side, front, what not. Like absolutely stunning camera. I love the camera on this car. Like oh my god, look at the graphics. Obviously, it gets adaptive guidelines. But you know what is even better? The 360 degree view here. I just can turn it, but yeah, that's not helping. This is the front camera. You know what? Whenever I change the steering angle, the camera also moves. Now that is obviously something to do with the software of the vehicle, and that's not all. It also has this beautiful 3D view. Yeah, which is super duper awesome. Like, look at it. I can just pinch out, but it's not really going to help. But this is such an amazing thing. The bird's eye view. I really like it, and obviously you get the 360 degree view here as well. So yeah, you can decide a lot of things how you want the. Okay, I get it. <laughs> the volume for the parking sensors, that's amazing. Now this screen is a 10.1 inch unit. This is also a 10.1 inch unit. So dual 10.1 inch unit screens. Now the problem is that this is not very easy to operate. Now this is obviously for the climate control system. So here I turn on the air conditioning at the moment. This is for heating of the seat. This is for the co-passenger one. For the driver, it is here. This is for the ventilation. For the driver, it is here. 
so yeah cool seats ventilated seats all that is obviously the air conditioning is a four zone unit very nice works fantastically well has this ion function as well let's just shut this this is for the stop start system i've turned it off downhill assist and this is for another menu to get the audio system here on the lower screen this is to turn on and off the heads up display of the vehicle when i press this button here you know i can configure the heads up display and this is to turn off the screen on the top you can see it's quite the fingerprint magnet so nice easy to use screen but a little cumbersome because you need physical dice thankfully you have that for the volume control and uh, you have air conditioning buttons here like okay this is for the air conditioning this is for the hazard light this is for traction control and this is for the drive select the audi drive select now when you come to this screen again it's relatively easy to navigate because all the information is right here you get into car there's this rs monitor which shows you the g force which tells you what is the temperature like with various factors the tire pressure monitor and of course this beautiful mode which actually shows you what is your latitude longitude what is the raise level of the vehicle what is the steering angle as well that's kind of nice and how much is the movement of the suspension that's cool now you can get into audi drive select and there are various things here you can configure the audi drive select the way you like we'll get out of this because it has lights and vision now it has got background lighting basically ambient lighting and you can pair that to the drive select of course and then obviously there are multiple modes as well and then in individual you can configure them for surfaces they are around 30 colors i believe yeah 30 colors for the surfaces and for the contours also they are 30 colors so yeah ambient light is nice but yeah we missed 64 colors for the ambient lighting here let me get out of this so it has this haptic feedback but it could have been a lot better now in seats there are a lot of things you can adjust you don't want to do that you can press that button which i was showing you here there's a button here now, if i press this button it turns on the massage of the vehicle so there is wave pulse stretch and then you can reset okay this rest not reset shoulder and activation revitalization intensity you can choose how you want the intensity to be so that's the massage function which is going to stop it for a moment now you can actually set the temperature also heating cooling of the seats and then you can adjust the seat in multiple ways so if you want the under thigh support to be better you can just press this button and then increase or decrease the under thigh support you can see that is happening at the moment so let me just decrease the under thigh support and show you there it is going back in yeah so there's so many things which you can do navigation is beautiful in this car like look at the navigation like really kick ass so let's get into settings here you can get into display and brightness so to actually change the cluster but i can do it directly as well so i'm not going to get into that let's get into reverse for the moment so i'm in reverse right now now once i'm in reverse i'm trying to use the rear wipers to see if that spray thing happens there you can see the spray is happening on the rear camera of course very nice here you can see it from here yeah good amount of spray on offer where is the spray coming from i can't even see that yeah it, it is coming from inside the wiper let's use the front wipers as well since we are on it there you can see yeah good amount of spray on offer but the spray is so much now it is actually reaching the roof a bit not much as such yeah wipers work really very nice now let's get out of this camera thingy and uh, yeah let me get into park now steering wheel is absolutely fantastic it's beautiful to hold it has this perforation on it it has got this red stitching as well it says rs here flat bottom too this is the control for the cruise control and obviously it gets electric adjust so yeah this is the lever for the electric adjust i'm not sure if you guys can see it yeah electric adjust both for reach as well as rake oh uh, yeah that's kind of cool now the paddles could have been slightly better they could have been finished in a better quality and could be slightly bigger but hey i'm not going to complain much about it audi logo of course the horn the horn is loud but the insulation inside is so good you can't really hear much this is to get into the rs mode so yeah when i get into rs mode this is the view which completely changes and then i can also have another smaller view so all this is there of course in the rs mode which is quite nice in fact i can browse through a lot of information here tire pressure monitor i can decide if i want to see the audio system or the phone or the navigation everything i can see here i can do a full map view as well beautiful okay now let me get out of rs mode there are two rs modes actually uh, one turns off traction control and then again i same thing i can browse here as well so yeah lot of information which can be seen now again i can get into the full view it's not as comprehensive as the one i've seen on mercedes cars but i would just say it's decent enough there you obviously get the g monitor and i can go through a lot of things like onboard computer lap times i can set a lap time as well then lap statistics shows me how fast i've been through a lap acceleration measurement okay where i can time the car 0 to 100 0 to 200 1/4 mile 1/8 mile reduce display okay nothing is in the center so all this is also there like pretty nice ha huh? very nice audi i like it a lot of info here and there what do you think about this 12.3 in screen 
I think it could be a lot better in terms of graphics. It's quick enough. It is crisp, but you know, more options are definitely needed. Here you get the temperature meter. Here you get the fuel meter, and obviously telltale lights everywhere. So yeah, it's a nice looking unit without a doubt. I personally like the G-Force meter, which is very handy because yeah, that's what you want to see. But it, they call it sport displays. In sport displays, they are telling me the tire pressure monitor. Like why? Now when I press this RS mode, the cluster mode obviously changes, and you can see there also. it also changes the heads up display which is giving me a lot of information including the engine temperature it can also show me the g force meter i believe so that's quite nice and otherwise the regular heads up display is kind of on the boring side as well okay these are the controls for the wipers these are the controls for the indicators and head automatic headlights automatic wipers all that is obviously there in this car now there is some storage space here below the front center armrest there's a wireless charging pad there it's not as big as i would have expected it to be and then you can obviously move it ahead or behind pardon this is my sweat at the moment i'm sweating like crazy because super duper hot in fact outside temperature is probably 40 degrees at the moment now let's do one thing let's listen to an audio right away audio quality is actually very nice and the quality of materials are also very nice like soft material here hard lower down glove box can be locked as well if you so wish and overall the quality of the cabin is impeccable to say the least like everything feels so nice to touch and hold these are actually the controls for the instrument cluster these are the controls for the audio system and this is obviously for the rs mode of the vehicle that's not all everything is a fingerprint magnet here because they are finished in black that's a little bit of an issue as such which you obviously have to manage Now every time you turn on the car it shows you nice graphics every time you turn off the car it again shows you nice graphics with Audi logo in the center and then it's like a curtain from which it's coming and you just press this button to turn off the car there the Audi logo comes and uh, this has this uh, red finishing around so that you can see it clearly even in bright daylight here as soon as i exit the car the seat actually moves behind we have shut the vehicle we are just going to get out because i'm going to lock the car so here we go i love the way the soft close door works i know i've said it 15 times already but yeah that's such a cool thing now let's do one thing let's lock the car there the uh, like outside rear view mirror shut of course and now we are going to keep this button press to roll down the power windows there they roll down very fast there's no delay here at all goes completely inside and yeah the sunroof also tilts that's kind of nice since the car is open at the moment every time you uh, like open the door the window goes slightly up every time you close it the window will go down completely yes it happens very slowly so you might not notice it anyways let's get inside and let's turn on the car you can save your profiles and stuff that's also cool and there it does a full swipe up rose to life the outside rear view mirrors also go out uh, like they also open up while people who should not really be buying this car and buy this car end up in this menu which is efficiency assist but since i'm not done a dedicated vlog on the q8 i thought ispe pura dedicated ka dikha leta hu interiors bahut lamba ho gaya but chalo let's start driving right away All right, we are all set to go, which means turning off the air conditioning. Turning oh, as soon as I turn off the air conditioning, the car only turned off. It's like, nah, aaram se efficiency pe rehenge. Straight away, I'm just going to press RS mode here. The cluster changes. We get into drive mode and hazard light off. Left foot on the brake, right foot on the accelerator. Launch control program activated. That's zero to hundred kilometers per hour in three point eight seconds. We'll validate that later. But trust me, the performance is absolutely bonkers here because this car is powered by a four liter TFSI motor, which is of course a V eight with twin turbochargers. Yeah, it's bi turbo motor. 
by the way it produces 600 horsepower at 6000 rpm and the torque output is 800 newton meters which comes in between 2200 rpm to 4500 rpm so we have got the numbers right up front so let me tell you 0 to 100 kilometers per hour comes up in a claim 3.8 seconds 0 to 200 kilometers per hour comes up in 13.7 seconds so it's like 2-3 seconds slower than say the sedan or the wagon counterparts using the same engine because the RS6 as well as the RS7 use the same 4 litre bi-turbo V8 motor in fact when I'm saying that you know these two cars use the same engine actually it's also the Bentley Ventega and the Lamborghini Urus and the Porsche Cayenne which also use the same engine so this engine goes in a lot of cars from the VW group it's a fantastic engine really offers great performance in fact look look, look at me okay here Ah, the soundtrack is nice now. Nah? Ah, it's actually coming from the speakers as well. So some fake sounds are obviously coming. But the engine doesn't have the character of an AMG. It doesn't even have the soundtrack of an AMG. Somehow it feels kind of subdued, which is a bit disappointing. But the thrust levels are absolutely stunning. Because first and foremost, it uses a 48 volt mile hybrid technology system which results in decent low end performance but it's really the mid-range where it performs the best the mid-range grunt is fantastic here it pulls super strongly in the mid-range and then of course the top end is also very nice and ballistic the gearbox is a eight speed torque converter unit which is very fast with shifts is very quick with shifts and it doesn't shy to give you a downshift so uh, you know it's aggressive in that regard obviously when we are driving in dynamic mode which we are in right now Overall, I would say that the engine is absolutely fantastic, aided by six freaking drive modes. Yeah, that's right. It has got six drive modes and two RS modes, which can be configured. Only in RS2 mode, you can actually uh, put the ESP system, rather the electronic, whatever, traction control on sport, which we have done at the moment doesn't make any difference whatsoever there's just so much grip on offer no matter what the speed is and no matter how aggressive you are with the throttle or with the steering wheel they just car doesn't leave any grip whatsoever and fuel efficiency i'm sure you guys have come to hear that only so i'm just telling you it is between three to seven eight kilometers per liter depending on your driving style because this car has got cylinder deactivation which can shut probably four of the eight cylinders to improve fuel consumption or rather reduce fuel consumption and improve fuel efficiency and that only happens at light loads not in dynamic mode which we are in right now steering wheel is a bit too light for my liking i would have expected more dynamism in that regard but you know what is the biggest surprise for me when driving this car is this the directional changes are absolutely crazy it is so freaking quick with directional changes it blows your mind the engineers who worked on this car missed all the physics classes and that's the reason they decided we don't have to follow any route of physics so we just defied it is super quick it's thanks to rear wheel steering wheel and beyond that also this car's got a lot of tech some of which actually comes with the dynamic package uh, dynamic plus package i think which gives you the sport differential at the rear which is stock vectoring along with uh, it also opens the speed limiter to 305 kilometers per hour standard it will do 250 kilometers per hour and it also gives it anti-roll bars at the rear electromechanical anti-roll bars that curbs body roll of course and this car doesn't have any body roll actually it's just so freaking grippy so freaking stable so quick with direction changes absolutely bonkers how this car handles i love the handling of this car i just wish the steering had more feel and connectedness to it which is kind of lacking here and that package also gives you carbon ceramic brakes for which you have to actually pay extra but audi realizes that if you want to go to 300 kilometers per hour and stop you need carbon ceramic brakes the regular steel disc will not do it for you any speed you get on the throttle there is an immediate lunge ahead there is no let go of punch in fact this car will hit it 305 kilometers per hour like a galloping horse thinking that it can still go faster unless the limiter is like nah that's it it's like you hit a wall now i can tell you all this because i drove this car on the track where i was able to hit a top speed of i think maybe 250 kilometers per hour and it reaches there so freaking quickly now it's unbelievable and like i was telling you the directional changes are absolutely stunning in this car rear wheel steering works fantastically well and i think i've spoken so much that we need to stop and we need to relaunch because that's the whole fun of driving an rs model now I get manual control of things for which I just slot the gear lever here on the left. So there are three gearbox modes as well, and there we are in second. Here, here it is hitting the red line at 6,750 rpm. So another trick is that it will not give you manual control of things in first gear. So it will upshift in first gear. It will not upshift in second and beyond. Eight-speed gearbox, of course. And if you're hitting the red line in eighth gear, well, congratulations. <laughs> you are either on the Nurburgring, no, 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 maybe on the German Autobahn or driving down a cliff because this car is just so freaking fast the speed 
unbelievable the handling unbelievable the brakes super sharp okay the thing is the initial bite is a bit lacking but you know you have to dive a bit into the pedal to stop more aggressively so it realizes that if you want to drive it comfortably well be my guest and that's why we are just going to get the car right now into comfort mode yeah here comfort mode things feel so calm you realize that you're just driving a regular qa not an absolute monster of a machine so it does the balance beautifully well it's like a fantastic balance of everything and as soon as i got into regular mode you can see the heads up display is also changed and here we're going to come to a stop yeah silence and refinement mind blowing so we get into rs mode 2 which automatically turns off the esp system or we just going to try and manually do it esc is sport right now we are in drive mode i'm just going to get into manual mode at the moment i'm just going to change this display as well which is going to put something else but everything else okay the g force meter and here we are going to go and time the car acceleration measurement okay 0 to 100 km per hour left foot on the brake right foot on the accelerator revving the motor Okay, zero to hundred kilometers per hour in five point one seconds. I kind of missed that shift because in manual mode, now. So in second gear, it hit the red line. It must have spent around point one of a second extra. But I have the belief that it's not going to hit three point eight seconds. There's something amiss here today. So we're going to try and time it yet again, which means zero to hundred kilometers per hour. Hazard light off. Revving the motor. Launch control. Four point seven seconds. That's like point nine seconds off. So there's something not right with this car. Anyways, you know what? This is the fastest car to have lapped the Nurburgring. So either the fastest production SUV to have lapped the Nurburgring. You know what? The Tesla Model S played is faster than this car actually. I think around the Nurburgring. But then that's a different ball game completely because it's electric and it's a sedan. But this is the second fastest now. When it was launched, it was the fastest. Now someone from the group only has beaten the record, which happens to be none other than the Porsche Cayenne GT. the coop the turbo coop whatever it's like a complex name but it uses the same 4 liter bi turbo v8 however it has 640 horsepower and 850 newton meters of torque so 40 horsepower more and 50 newton meters more torque resulting in 0 to 100 coming up even faster than the urus at 3.3 seconds so its competitors the bmw x6 m competition as well as the mercedes amg gle 63 s formatic plus coupe is doing the same time of 3.8 seconds so it's on par with its rivals the urus does it in 3.6 seconds and <laughs> the porsche cayenne gt oh my god that does it in 3.3 seconds and the top speed is 300 km per hour for everyone this one is 5 km per hour higher i don't know why somehow audi is like here i'm giving you 5 km per hour higher top speed in fact this is 1 km per hour faster than the urus as well which has a top speed of 304 km per hour by the way this handles i think better than the urus and uh, although the urus is faster this looks Looks better than the Urus. It's cheaper than the Urus. Why would you buy an Urus? Just get the Audi RS Q8. Easy to service. More sales outlet of Audi. I know it doesn't have the bragging rights of the Raging Bull, but still, it's a fantastic car. It's an absolute surreal vehicle. It's like stupendous to say the least. Wow, unbelievable. Now the thing is that. Uh, Overall refinement levels are fantastic. In spite of the fact that it's got like massive 23 inch wheels, you can't hear tire noise. So that's beautifully engineered here. But the problem is that the ride is obviously on the stiffer side, and the car is having some creaks and rattles at the moment, which you can hear. I'm sure you can. That's not the point. The point is that the ride quality is quite acceptable for a car running on 23 inch wheels and 35 profile tires, and that's because Audi mostly gets its damping right. Right, <laughs> the ride also right. The thing is, in comfort mode, it's just better because obviously the dampers kind of become lo loosen up and all that stuff. And then if you want to take the car over bad road, there's an off-road mode as well. So overall ride height can be increased by 90 mm. So there are five steps for the suspension adjustment, and I think it adjusts by 18 mm in every step. So to the max, you can raise it by 90 mm, which is quite a bit if you want to take it off-road. Well, this car will not have a problem at all, clearing even the worst of roads and even on the lowest setting, there's no problem. In dynamic mode, obviously, it squats down. Left foot. on the brake right foot on the accelerator revving the motor launch control and off we go so there are basically six drive modes on offer yeah there are six drive modes on offer in this car 
which happens to be a all road which is the off road mode which increases the ride height to the maximum by 90 mm that is this efficiency this comfort is auto there is dynamic and one of them i forgot no i have mentioned all the six i'm looking here and talking they are they're so confusing and here's what all can you alter you can obviously alter the drive system which consists of the engine as well as the gearbox then you can alter the suspension so both of them can be altered in multiple ways so engine and gearbox combined the drive system can be altered in efficient balanced and dynamic meanwhile suspension can be the comfortable balanced or dynamic so in comfort mode obviously the car feels much better but trust me on this over bad potholes you cannot drive it fast because of the big wheels and the stiffness which has to be there for this car to remain stable at 300 km per hour it just cannot cope up with bad bumps you have to slow down otherwise you're going to ruin the tires and then the steering can be made comfortable balanced or dynamic the engine sound can be the subdued automatic or pronounced pronounced matlab speakers se dalne wale sound and quattro with sport differential can be comfortable balanced or dynamic this car can be driven for up to 40 seconds on pure battery power because it's a mild hybrid system so if the lithium ion battery has enough juice you can also drive this car very comfortably for 40 seconds just to improve the fuel efficiency but i doubt when the battery will have that charge because obviously i think it also helps in assisting the engine to offer better low end performance so for a car of this size and weight taking a u turn can be a bit of the pain in your rear but the good news is that it's got rear wheel steering which obviously helps in taking you know easier u turns and maneuverability at low speeds and obviously at high speeds also the handling and everything is fantastic because of the rear wheel steering and that 48 volt mild hybrid system also aids the uh, uh, you know the anti roll bars which prevents body roll and then the overall balance high speed stability and of course the way this car is able to handle with creole quick turn ins all thanks to a lot of tech this tech is where this car absolutely excels and i just love the way it goes okay you can feel a bit of the movement so the ride is not the best but for something with such low profile tires and this level of stiffness it's actually very much bearable now the weight of this car is almost 2400 kg which is quite a bit and then it's also a tall car i think 1.7 meters in height yet it handles so beautifully well it's like a supercar on steroids yeah a race supercar if i may use the exact word which was used by porsche when they made the lap record on the nurburgring with the can gt recently they said the same thing. Saying that it's just a supercar, which is a little higher riding one. The RS Q8 is also very similar in that regard. Thrust, thrust, and endless level of thrust. You know what? No matter how hard you corner, there is no understeer whatsoever. It doesn't leave its line at all. And even if you are braking very heavily now, this car will not lose its balance. So that is a level of grip. So this car has grip. Then it's got more grip. Then it's got even more grip. And it's got even more grip. The car has just unlimited amount of grip <laughs> that makes it so fantastic only thing is there's another thing which changes with the dry mode is that the ESC system can go into sport from regular which gives it a little bit of more playfulness but it doesn't really oversteer that fast so that is the level of safety and that's the level of grip it has to offer now the thing is that traditionally the quattro system puts 40% torque to the front wheels and 60% to the rear wheels now because it's got the sport differential the quattro sport differential it's able to put up to 85% of the torque to the rear wheels to give it a slightly more sporty edge in terms of driving ability and trust me it works okay i know a lot of these bits might be optional including the 23 inch wheels but you're better off with the 22 for india of course because of the bad roads but even with those massive wheels this car just manages the practicality bit so beautifully well which brings the urus into the equation again you're going to pay 1 crore almost around that ballpark for the urus over the rs q8 which is quite the premium and then obviously optional bits are going to cost a lot more for lambo when compared to audi you're going to pay 82 lakhs i think lesser for the regular q8 model which is the 55 tfsi so should you get the rs q8 you should definitely i think it's a beautiful balance between both the absolute mad urus i call it the mad urus because obviously the brand has that raging bull effect and the regular q8 and also its rivals which are also priced very similarly i think the gle 63 cost 1 lakh rupees less and maybe the x6m competition cost maybe 5 10 lakhs less but at that price you don't really care about pocket change now will you <laughs> the gearbox is so aggressive with its shifts it's just like ready for action at every given moment and other than the creaks and the rattles everything else on this car is absolutely stunning what a beast what a machine if the rs6 the new one was available in india i would just tilt my favor towards that car but right now does it make sense to pay 8 lakhs more for the rs7 probably yes because the rs7 is obviously faster and more dynamic but this car defies physics definitely it does
So guys, this is my vlog of the Audi RS Q8, a very capable off-roader, all-rounder. It can go off-road. Did I say off-road? I know it's not a capable off-roader. It is actually capable, but it's not capable because it can go off-road, but the tires cannot support that cause. You need different tires for it. Obviously, these are like really low-profile tires, not meant for the cause. And uh, the exhaust also pops and cracks a bit, but could be a little bit more aggressive. Listen to this, okay? Yeah, I like it. I like the exhaust. I wish it was a bit more louder. And then the price of this vehicle is rupees 2.48 crores on road Mumbai, making it pricey. But yes, the engineering feat which Audi has achieved with this car, absolutely surreal, absolutely fantastic. What a phenomenal machine! Really love it. Now I'm just going to do one thing. I'm just going to get into the regular comfort mode and show you that how easy going the car is. I think we reached off-road mode by mistake, but yeah, it's just so easy, relaxed, and doesn't give you a hint of that monster which is lurking ahead. Because even in comfort mode, when things are like toned down several notches, you get into the throttle. The pull is unbelievably nice as well. Yeah, downshift. Thing is, you can't hear it as much because unfortunately, it uh, subdues the exhaust note. So the best thing is just press the RS mode here, which you can configure it the way you like. Expansion joints are not the friend of this car at all. It just hates it. It, it just cannot cope up with it. <laughs> Launch is super aggressive. Bye bye.